This is Scott Manley here with the ultimate solution to my unmanned rocket challenge. So here we are sitting on the launch pad with the new rocket design. Jebediah sitting there patiently in his command bunker. He usually has tons of fuel sitting beneath him, not on top of him. But nonetheless, he throttles up and hits the big red button to launch. There we go. And we are off. And you can immediately see what my grand plan was. Well, my grand plan in part was lots of fuel and engines, but the stability solution was provided by offsetting the thrust angles for all four of these aerospike engines. So we're going to pick up the rotation naturally being driven by the motors. We're wasting a small amount of our fuel to basically get some sort of passive stability. And the real question is, how high can we get, you know, can we get high enough that the rotation uh, matters? Or are we gonna just continue to arc over? Well, we will find out. It's definitely curving over now, but I think that we are going over slowly enough that even, well, I, I think we're gonna get definitely into the upper atmosphere. We might get into an orbital trajectory. Um, Although it's highly unlikely that we end up in any orbit that makes sense for us. But yeah, we're up to 167 meters per second and we're six and a half kilometers up. I don't think we're, we're moving over that fast. I, I think the rotation early on is partly due to the effect of atmospheric drag. So I suspect that once we get above most of the atmosphere, the small amount of rotation will start to trail off. And you can see a really good sign. See how the smoke trail is actually skewed sideways there? That indicates that we're moving sideways faster. Uh, so basically our velocity vector is independent from our pointing vector, which is a really good sign. It means that we're not getting pulled over by the, the aerodynamic force of the atmosphere. So we're now up at 14 kilometers. This is usually the altitude that we fire up these aerospikes on space planes. So, you know, the atmosphere is still here, but it's definitely having a lower effect. Now the, the aerodynamic drag is becoming less important. We're up to, you know, almost 500 meters per second. There we go. And this looks solid. Now, one of the reasons that we waited until dawn was that the, if you look at the remote, if you look at the motion of the planets, then at dawn, that is when the zenith at Kerbal Space Center is pointing almost exactly along the orbital vector of the planet Kerbin. So, if we are lucky and this picks up enough speed, we should see it going into a higher orbit. It, right? If we can get it up fast enough that it escapes the Kerbin system, then it will go into a heliocentric orbit that will uh, rise up further and maybe take it into the outer Kerbin system, the outer Kerbal system. But uh, we'll see. I mean, and so on paper, this thing has delta Vs that are up around, you know, seven or eight, nine kilometers per second. I haven't done the exact math, but the, the nice thing is that because you're not carrying a command module, the, the actual mass ratio, which we use for the rocket equation, is, is really good. I mean, there's basically not a lot of leftover mass after, these, after the fuel tanks are empty. So I suspect that we could even get up to, up to escape trajectory from not only the Kerbin system, but escape trajectory from the Kerbal system. And if I can do that, then I have set a standard which no one can beat. People can equal perhaps, but never beat. They could probably do it faster, but we shall find out. It does look like we're not arcing over anymore. Our um, apoapse is now up at 1,200. If we are going fast enough that if we were pointing the right way, we would be in orbit. Unfortunately, we can't control what way it points. Now we're heading out towards the, the moon's orbit. Maybe we will have a pass by, a uh, fly past. Well, no, it doesn't look like we're going to be anywhere near it when we actually get there. We dallied with them. Okay, watch my fuel consumption. Oh, yep. Okay, so we're on to... We've burned two of those large tanks, and we've got this third tank left. 
Is that going to be enough to get us up to escape velocity? We'll find out. We're up at three and a half kilometers per second. We need to get up to around six, I think, relative to Kerbin. And you can see we're up to four kilometers per second. Look, we're accelerating at like five Gs because there's so little mass left after we've burned all that fuel. I don't know if we'll get up to like the 15 Gs that we saw in the... Um, the solid rocket boosters, but we're definitely getting up there. Like, watch the apoapsis. Three years, four years, five years, six years. We're basically, we're gone. Yeah, that's us. Six to eight years is the limit. <laughs> I suspect that is because of a 32-bit time number, time count. Up at 5.8, 5.9, six kilometers per second. And we're almost about to burn out our fuel. 6.5, 6.5 kilometers per second on an escape trajectory entirely unguided except by the, you know, except by passive means. So I would say mission success. So successful we found some new interesting orbital physics. Well, you know, we'll probably fix that in KSP.17. I'm Scott Manley. See you next time. Fly safe.